Hello, Simon here with another Too Many Projects and we're continuing with the CD200 renovation today. And the next thing on the list is this cylinder head. There's a strong chance that the reason there has been oil in one of the cylinders is because one of the valve seals has gone or the seat where the valve sits is letting out a little bit of compression. So there's no reason not to just service the valves and seats and check all the springs or everything are working properly, clean it all up. So let's have a look at what we've got here. All right, I've got all the pieces piled up from the dismantling in an earlier video here. So let's clear off what we're not looking at today. Spring tensioning parts. What are they called? Rocker something or others. Camshaft. I'll treat that with some respect. It's going to be, I think, we'll check the manual, but I think it's going to be a good clean up on this side. Obviously we'll take the spark plugs out first. Pretty nasty there. And then we're going to use the spring compressor to pop out the, pop out the springs and whatever the little things that hold the valves in the springs are called that I've forgotten at the moment. But first of all, I'm going to scrape off some carbon and polish up this face just as we've done before. <laughs> side it's looking a bit better now and I'm just gonna finish off this side this poor valve here is starting to to come up there is still some nice metal underneath all that carbon it's just super super dirty so hopefully um, if I keep going that's gonna come up but I'll just uh, finish off around the edge here have another go at that and then we'll look at taking these valves out I've bought a cheap valve spring compressor. Last time I did this, I think I did it with a um, carefully customized piece of pipe and a G-clamp. <clears throat> well, they're super easy things to use. So we've got a big U thing with threaded ends like a G-clamp, a couple of long threaded things, one with a connector on one end, which is similar to that, which might be used for a socket set. Then a bunch of different sizes of, I uh, don't know what that would call that, you know, thing for a valve, valve spring. Um, this one fits beautifully over the valve like that and will not slide off. And then with it together like that, we can put this piece over the valve spring while, spin that round for you, this piece will come up against the valve itself to stop it from opening. Just like that, and I'll be getting the, getting the bar and just tightening that one up to compress the spring. And we're gonna see two little halves of a thing I've forgotten the name of that stops the spring from firing off the end of the valve. So we've pushed the, the valve spring down and there's two little pieces and I've got a magnet on the end of this so I don't drop them. And I'm gonna try and keep all of these together and marked up where they've come from. And so now when I release the valve spring compressor, the spring will go over the end of the valve stem and the valve will fall out. We just Like I say, you can create a valve spring compressor with a bit of pipe and some a G clamp, but this kit was under 20 quid delivered, so I mean it's not it's not nice quality, but it really isn't a complex piece of equipment. So that's clear. So that's the washer off the top of the valve spring. And the valve spring itself. Ooh, there's two valve springs. 
uh, which fits over there. Another valve spring, which I wasn't expecting. Et voila, one valve. So I'll do the same for the other three. So there's the valves out from the underside. I don't know if you can see how nasty it is in there. Maybe if I overexpose it a bit, but there's a lot of crap. And that's actually paint from the outside of the bike inside the exhaust port, which is a bit of a concern. The valves are all marked up here. The stems will need measuring and checking, but there doesn't seem to be very much wear on them. The service limit on an exhaust valve is 5.4 mil. If we just check in various places up this valve stem, you can see we're at about 5.42, 5.43. So this is a worn valve stem, but it's 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 got a way to go before it's uh, completely dead. I'd better bear that in mind, though. They're all fine. They're all looking good. So these are the valve guides. They're fine. I mean, the, the valves are in their service limit. It doesn't feel like there's much play in these, so I'm going to leave the, I mean, you can take them out and replace them. That's not something I'm going to do. But on top of them, maybe I can do this with my finger now so as not to damage them yet. There is a little rubber O-ring. Maybe you can see that's one with it pulled off. Um, and that's one with it on. I have new O-rings. It's hard to see in the camera because I've still got it in the plastic and I don't want to lose it. But this old one has a much, much bigger hole in it than this new replacement. I think these are considerably worn. Next thing I'm looking at is around these faces where the valve meets the head. Just like the book says, some pitting has occurred on the exhaust side because it gets much hotter and it wears much quicker. So the exhaust side are definitely going to be needing re-grinding because there is some pitting, not nearly as good condition as the inlet ones, which are still looking pretty shiny and fresh. Um, so next thing to do, I'm going to give this, try and clean this up a lot more so I can have a better look at those. Warm water, bit of degreaser. Let's chuck it in there and let it soak through for a bit. You should probably shouldn't use the degreaser to clean my hands, but it seems to be pretty effective at getting this oil off. I think I'm just going to soak it there for maybe 10 minutes and then have a go at it. I've got back quite a bad reputation for leaving things in liquids overnight if you look back at the uh, carburetor video. Okay, so that's 10 minutes. Now, during the 10 minutes, I read the instructions on the degreaser to see if I could leave this overnight. There was nothing that I learnt, but I did learn that it does have a big skin irritation warning on it. So I'm wearing a glove this time. Thanks to all those who just screamed it at the screen a second ago, but uh, you're too late. I read it. I read it. It has loosened up some of the dirt in these cosmetic areas that I don't care about, but it hasn't really made much difference in those holes to some of that dirt, and especially on this exhaust side, which is nasty. It doesn't feel like it's loosened up. I'm not leaving this head in the degreaser overnight because I've been there and I don't understand what chemicals damage what metals over time, and I'm not gonna do it. I might need to use some of those nasty chemicals that I usually avoid that really, really do do horrible things to your skin. Okay, that's it for me today. I'll join you in a second, in a few days' time. So 
all we're trying to do by lapping in valves is just re-grind this seal which the valve makes when it goes into the valve guide there with the, with the head. So I've just grabbed this rather nice looking grinding paste which has coarse on the bottom and fine on the top and we're going to use the coarse one definitely on the exhaust valves that have a lot of pitting that I hope is quite apparent on the camera there and maybe just use the fine on the inlet valves because they're not bad at all. The kit also came with some real crappy uh, lapping tools which are basically like a crap wooden stick with a rubber sucker on the end and they weren't the right size. There might be some good outtakes from a few days ago when I tried. Aye, aye, aye. The exhaust valve is really small and so I had to get this slightly posher plastic kit as well just to make sure that the sucker fits on the exhaust valve. They're really small valves on this engine. Here's a particularly pitted exhaust valve. You can see the silver colour on the valve is the, the face that meets with the face on the head here. And we're going to add a little bit of engine oil to the stem, which just makes sure that there's nothing that's going to scratch the stem or, or the valve guide when we spin it round and round and round. And then we're just going to take some of the coarse grinding paste and really carefully make sure to just add it around the face of the, of the valve. We want to be really careful because if we get any back here, we're in trouble. Because we'll just be grinding inside the valve guide. I'm going to drop it in. Gently. And then just... Oh, it's happened again. I hate these tools. They're such a crappy tool. There's a really good rant I found on YouTube when I was trying to find a workaround for the fact that the other tool was too small, and I highly recommend you listen to that gentleman saying how much he hates these tools, which makes me feel much better about it. Oh, there we go, it's starting, it's starting to go. One thing that really helps is if this, you really have to get all the carbon off the top here so that you're trying to adhere the sucker to a totally flat surface. Ah, oh, that's better. It's not perfect, but it's better. It's still a bit slippy. Well, you can hear the difference quite quickly. I'm just moving it backwards and forwards with my hands here and then rotating a little bit and going again. Because we want to have an even grind all the way round. Using a drill is not a good idea for this. It's not going to do what you want it to. Maybe if you use it very slowly, but... Oh, come on. This has taken me half an hour because of the incredible difficulty I'm having getting the suckers to stick. I've actually found it's more effective to use this sucker, which is clearly too big. But honestly, if you add up the actual amount of time I've been spinning this valve, probably comes to a good 90 seconds to two minutes. I've seen a lot of people find the correct tool to grab the valve from the other side of the head, especially with a nice, good quality collet or something like that that's gonna really grab the valve without damaging it. This is probably the last set of suckers I'm ever going to buy. I'm going to find a better way of doing this in the future. To be fair, it's the third set of suckers I've ever bought and one of those sets was yesterday and the other set was 12 years ago. But let's have a look at what we've done there. I think, there you go. I think that's visible on the camera. And then just to compare, that's the one we haven't done yet. Next is to do the same thing with the fine paste. Give them a little twisty twist. That looks fresh from my angle. So, I'm going to do this one, the other exhaust valve, and then I'm going to do the same on the inlet side. 
I'm going to use the course on the on the inlet side, but it's not only just. I think probably a quick going over with the fine might do it, but just to be sure, there's no harm in just making sure those those faces are completely mated. And there we go, four lovely, consistently silver all the way around valve seats on the head, and the valves are looking lovely as well. So, before I put the valves back in, I really don't want any grit and stuff to be left over. I've wiped it down as best I can, but I'm gonna chuck it in the degreaser bucket again, just to really rinse out and make sure there's absolutely no little bits of grit from the grinding paste left in there. Clean, rinsed and dry. So we're gonna get these put back on now in the same way we got them off, but in reverse order. I have checked all the springs free length to make sure they're within their serviceable limit because they do get crushed. One of the things I'm gonna be doing is making sure that the um, end of the spring, which has the tighter coils, needs to go towards the head when I put that in. That's important. And I've also inspected all of the valve stems um, and the groove, especially at the end, which is where the collet grabs onto it to stop it from flying off the end. So I think I'm gonna start with an exhaust valve on. There's the exhausts. I'm gonna turn it around this way, because that's easier. Because then I know that's the left side of the engine, that's the right side of the engine. So the left exhaust valve is this one. Bit of oil. Slide it in where we were lapping it before. Flip the head over. So that's the end of our valve as it's come through there. The first thing to do is to pop a new oil seal on there and then just snap it down onto the valve guide. The next thing to do is to pop this little wash down which is a valve spring seat. Then a spring with the tighter coils downwards, that's the inner spring. Outer spring, the same, tighter coils downwards. Collar on top. And then we need the spring compressor to push all that down. And so that's our valve stem sticking out through the collar. Then slowly and carefully, I should be able to now release this tension on the spring. Now the next bit I'm wary of, because I didn't know you had to do this, but is to hit it with a hammer. To make sure it's firmly attached, which sounds like a silly thing to do, to make sure you strike right on the valve stem, not anything else, and just make sure when it's compressed it doesn't pop off, which it didn't, which is great. I suppose that's just because you can't compress it with your fingers, but okay. Gonna do the next three, and I'll be back with you. Four valves, laps, new oil seals on the stems, and reinstalled. All right, that took ages, and I'm gonna to have to leave it there for this video. But on the next one, we will look to get the rockers back on, and sorted out, and try and get the engine back together. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, etc.